Hi guys, how's it going? Welcome to Metaverse, our second show where we get to debate and speculate as to what's going on in the world of virtual reality. Today we're looking at, more specifically, the new leaks of Apple's VR anticipated headset and what does it mean for Facebook and future Oculus Quest VR devices? Let's take a look. There are quite a few videos which we've uploaded to the channel in 2020 about Apple's plans to get into the VR industry. The information that's been revealed quite some time ago that isn't new in the latest leaks include, for example, the fact that they're building apparently some kind of third party box or hub which will store information. The hub might be quite heavy because apparently it's going to be as big as a PC tower. So I'm not quite sure where people will put it or what the usage of this hub will be. Would it specifically be only for the VR headset, do you think? Or do you think ultimately it will also be used as a personalized computing system where perhaps future Apple products will be stored on the cloud? So this has actually been a technology that's been talked about for several years where people just basically open the laptops and that's it. They're straight inside of the actual operating system. There's nothing to wait or no booting of any kind. The other information that seems to be consistent with previous reports is the actual build of the VR headset itself. It seems that Apple are opting for some kind of fabric to house the casing instead of traditional VR headsets which use some kind of plastic or some kind of material at least to make sure that it's protected. It seems that on the initial drawings that were leaked, the design is pretty flat, which seems to have some semi-transparent glass on the actual display itself. So perhaps the fabric areas will be very small, but again, we're not seeing any leaks of the actual product itself. So this is 100% speculative. But if the reports are true and they're saying that the design is going to resemble apparently the Oculus Quest, then we can expect a lot of fabric, which basically means we're going to have to be very cautious with the actual headset in terms of dropping it and also having any potential liquids around it. Another leak that came out is apparently Apple will actually be using a fan inside of the VR headset, which comes to quite a surprise because they've been focusing on developing technology, which is completely fanless inside of the laptops and other devices. And if they're going to be using cloth around the housing, then we can assume that the fan might actually come across pretty loud after a certain while, especially if the headset is going to start to heat up. Because generally speaking, when you're using a plastic kind of case, it isolates the sound, which basically means we don't get really to hear the fan that much. One of the reasons that the Oculus Quest 2, which was released by Facebook, potentially had lost the fabric is because it is actually quite tough to clean. So what's going to happen if the fabric gets very sweaty or very dirty when people will be using the Apple VR headset? The maintenance is also a question to be answered for. Other reports that seem to be consistent is also the resolution of the actual headset itself. It seems that Apple will be gearing to releasing a 8K display, but does this mean it's going to be 8K per eye or 8K in total? This is also something that we're going to need some answers for eventually. Another difference between Facebook and Apple, of course, is the distribution channel with Facebook who have reportedly more than 1 billion people who signed up to the social network and Apple who have tens of thousands of different stores all over around the world. Facebook's strategy, however, is in the I don't care business. I just want to have as many people hooked to my social network. Therefore, I'm going to sell you the Oculus Quest or potential future products as cheap as I possibly can so that I can retain as much data as possible and sell that on to advertisers or third parties who could make use of it. However, Apple's strategy seems to be to go for the niche market, perhaps using a strategy that is going to be very similar to when Elon Musk has released the first Tesla Roadster, which only celebrities and very high-end customers could afford. This could be for several reasons. First of all, it could, of course, to create hype around the product and get the mass consumer to rally through later on in the future. It could also be because they need more time in order to test different products before they can release future headsets to the mass market. Let's not forget that Facebook have been in this game for years, selling their products to customers and having really gained a lot of experience. However, even though Apple have reportedly hired more than a thousand people to be working on AR and VR devices for more than 10 years, they have absolutely no experience when it comes to mass adoption. It is also possible that Apple simply do not have the relationships with various different development studios that Facebook has at the moment. Facebook have more than close to 100 titles inside of their stores. And also, of course, the VR headset is compatible with PC VR. So people who have the Oculus Quest 2 can invariably play 
hundreds of titles on the VR devices. And the question is, will the Apple VR device be able to do the same thing? even though it might not be the best comparison. But if we take, for example, Pico Interactive, who have the world's best enterprise at the moment, wireless standalone VR headset, they simply do not have the library of games inside of the VR device. So it's very hard for them to be able to gain that traction in the consumer market. But of course, we cannot compare them to Apple, who have hundreds of thousands of adopters using other devices, including their phones and also their Apple Macs. But how many developers do they have relationships with and how many titles will be available with an Apple VR device? When the Quest first launched, let's not forget that they had at least 50 titles that were available, which was already enough. And also all the titles that were available were of quite high quality, including, let's not forget, Beat Saber, which really helped mass adoption for the Oculus Quest at the time before they had purchased, before Facebook had purchased, Beat Saber for reportedly half a billion up to a billion US dollars. Leave some comments below because personally, I very much doubt that very wealthy people will just want to bring home a huge brick the size of a tower of a PC and also put something as heavy as an Oculus Quest on their head just to play some Angry Birds and watch some Netflix. The other question we can ask ourselves is what kind of chip are they gonna be using inside of the VR headset? Will they be going for the Qualcomm, which all the main rivals have actually been partnering with, with for example, an XR2 chip, or are they going to be taking this opportunity to develop their own Apple chip? That is also another question that we all need answers to. It is a great shame, of course, that it seems that their first products are not gonna rival with the likes of Oculus Quest, but it could be a joker in the car. They could also be releasing another product which will be much cheaper as they do with the iPhones, for example. Whatever happens, do watch this space as it seems very, very interesting. The VR headset is anticipated to be out within the next 18 months. So do be part of the notification squad by enabling the notification bell after you subscribe so you don't miss the next video as we will definitely keep you in the loop as to what's gonna be happening.